What up HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today we're going to do a preview of Tesla's Q1 2018 earnings. Next week on May 2nd, after the bell, Tesla will be releasing its financials for the first quarter of this year. This is an incredibly important report. All of the details about how much money they're making or losing on the Model 3 will be revealed. They have the conference call, which always has a ton of juicy information. So of course, I'm stoked for earnings next week. Wanted to make this episode breaking down what I am expecting for the quarter. So the most important thing is we already know how many cars Tesla's delivered in the quarter. In early April, they released their numbers for production and deliveries. For Q1, they delivered about 30,000 cars during the quarter. About 11,700 were Model S, 10,000 were Model X and about 8,200 were Model 3. This adds up to 30,000 cars total. So, you know, there's not really gonna be too many surprises in terms of revenue from Tesla because we already know exactly how many cars they sold. So this makes it a little bit easier to anticipate, but what I think all eyes are gonna be on is profitability. So now let's take a look at the charts and see what I'm expecting. This is what Tesla's quarterly financials have looked like for the past, you know, eight or 10 quarters. As you can see, revenue growth has been very strong, but losses have been increasing as they ramp the Model 3. Interesting to note that they did actually make an operating profit in Q3 2016. That was just to sort of prove to the market that they could do it. Here are my estimates for Q1 2018. I'm thinking 3.3 billion in revenue, about flat from Q4, with a loss of about 700 million, which is up about 100 million from the 600 million loss they reported in Q4 17. Now it is important to note the reason why I'm assuming that Tesla's revenue will be flat from Q4 to Q1 is that even though they've delivered slightly more vehicles, more of those vehicles are the Model 3, which is a lot lower price than the Model S or X, and I think that's gonna dampen automotive revenue, but I think we're gonna actually gonna have a very strong quarter from energy revenue, but more on that in a little bit. I'm expecting overall revenue growth of 22% from the first quarter of 2017, which did about 2.7 billion. Uh, I'm expecting the operating loss, once again, to more than double to about 700 million. Now if you're saying like, oh my God, like Tesla's growing, but these losses are insane. Like what is happening here? It's all about gross margin. As you take a look at their gross margin chart, you'll notice that just in the last two quarters, Tesla's gross margin has gone from the mid 20% range down to below 15%. This is because they're ramping Model 3 production. This requires a lot of upfront investments that won't pay off until the Model 3 hits economies of scale. So, you know, they only produced uh, about 8,000 or 10,000 Model 3s during Q1. So I'm still expecting very weak gross margins. Uh, I'm actually expecting them to even go down a little from Q4, about 13% overall gap gross margin is what I'm expecting from Tesla. And because these gross margins are so low, that is why we're looking at an operating loss of 700 million, which would be a record for Tesla. But it is important to note that I think we are bottoming out. This is gonna be the worst quarter for Tesla's financials, potentially in the entire company's history. That's right, I said it. As Model 3 ramps, I believe we're gonna see a recovery in gross margins. They're gonna talk a lot more about this on the call, so we'll know if this is actually gonna happen, but right now, I'm assuming that Tesla's able to recover uh, in Q2. And remember, Elon Musk has said the company will be profitable and produce positive operating cash flow in Q3 and Q4 of this year. There's no way they do that unless gross margins rebound above 20%, in my opinion, so that's what I'm gonna be looking for. Additionally, it's really important to note that, as you can see from this chart of Tesla's energy revenue, that the acquisition of Solar City occurred in Q4 2016, and so Q1 2017 was the first full quarter where we had Solar City. Why does this matter? Because Q1 2018 will be the first full year since Tesla acquired Solar City. So that growth rate that we're going to see in Tesla Energy won't be bumped up by Solar City. So we can get an idea of how fast Tesla's business is growing organically. In terms of the energy business, Tesla had a massive 129 megawatt hour battery project in Australia. It was the largest in the world at the time. I'm sure you guys remember the headlines about that. Well, they haven't actually recognized the revenue from that project and their Q4 letter, they said they would recognize that revenue in Q1. So I'm really going to be looking closely at energy revenue to see, you know, how big of an impact that Australian project had. Additionally, solar roof installations started to customers very recently. So I'm going to be really listening to hear if there's any updates on what is going on with the solar roof. A couple other things that I'm going to be looking for on the call, any sort of color or progress on Model 3 production, you know, is it improving? Are there bottlenecks solved? Just any sort of details we can gather from Elon about Model 3 
production. We'll be fasting to get an update on that. This is the make or break product for Tesla. So any new info is super important. Only the other huge question mark that I believe a ton of you guys are probably wondering as well is where are they gonna build the Model Y and the Tesla Semi? You know, the Tesla Semi is supposed to start customer deliveries in 2019. We've already seen it driving around the roads. Additionally, Reuters reported just about a couple weeks ago that Tesla's already talking to suppliers to get parts for the Model Y to begin Model Y production in November of 2019 at the Fremont factory. Now this goes against a lot of what Tesla has said on prior conference calls about the Fremont factory hitting capacity of about six or 700,000 units, 100,000 of those Model S and X, five to 600,000 Model 3. So the question is, you know, what has changed? Why are they able to now build the Model Y at Fremont? Is it just because they're gonna be building a very small volume there and it's actually gonna be eating up into Model 3 capacity? I just don't know. But the bottom line is Tesla's planning to bring the Semi and the Model Y to market and we have no idea where they're gonna build those things. So that is a huge question on my mind that I really hope gets asked on the call. I do have one theory about that, which is that Gigafactory 1 potentially could turn into a car production facility as well as a battery production facility, and that is where they could be building the semi truck and potentially another production line for Model Y. Overall, this quarter is going to be a bloodbath. The numbers are going to look really, really ugly. Tesla is setting up to produce, you know, hundreds of thousands of Model 3 cars per year. They only built and sold 8,000 in the quarter, so the financials are going to look really, really bad until they're able to ramp that Model 3 production. So I think things start to improve in Q2, but it's really important to, you know, set expectations that Q1 is going to have potentially the lowest gross margins in Tesla's history, potentially the biggest operating loss in Tesla's history, but that's not a reason to freak out. This is planned, and because the company is scaling so rapidly, they're making significant investments up front to be able to expand capacity, and that is why their income statement is gonna look so bad until they can ramp Model 3 production. So anyway, um, I'm gonna be following super closely all of the data coming around Tesla earnings. Of course, you guys know I'm gonna make an episode recapping the numbers once they come out. Also, there is this totally crazy moonshot going on that if you're watching this episode, I will be simultaneously putting out another episode that talks about how the hyperchange community, you guys can help get me on the Tesla earnings call. This is something I tried to do last quarter, but couldn't dial in. A few of you guys have been like, yo, Gally, try and get on the Tesla conference call. So I'm doing it. I'm going to put out a video. I need your guys' help. So make sure to check that out if you want to get involved. Also, if you like hyperchange, please check out our Patreon page. Consider supporting. Anyway, have a great weekend. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.